catechism recitation for this evening. Begins another re-examination of the Apostles' Creed on this night, the first article and its meaning. What is the first article of the Apostles' Creed? I, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. What does this mean? I believe that God has made me and all creatures, that he has given me my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all my members, my reason and all my senses, and still preserves them, also clothing and shoes, meat and drink, house and home, wife and children, fields, cattle, and all my goods, that he richly and daily provides me with all that I need to support this body and life, that he defends me against all danger and guards and protects me from all evil, and all this fills me out of fatherly, divine goodness and mercy without any merit or worthiness in me, for all which it is my duty to thank and praise, to serve and obey him, this is most certainly true. Now our hymns come out of the Easter section of the Lutheran hymnal. Our first, number 210, the strife is o'er the battle.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and the forgiveness the iniquity of my sin. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto thee all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended thee, and justly deserve thy temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray thee of thy godless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of thy beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And instead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Be merciful unto me, O Lord, for I cry unto thee daily. For thou, O Lord, art good and ready to forgive, and plenteous in mercy unto all.
never be crazy. That thy grace may always go before and follow after us, and make us continually to be given to all good works. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Stand 
Oh. 
grace to you and peace from God your Father. From the Lord Jesus Christ, his Son, your resurrection and your life. As the Holy Spirit testifies through this gospel unto us this day, that even as the Lord lives forever, so we who are joined to him in faith live forever with him. Amen. For I raise my hand to heaven and say, I live forever. Well, that's what makes him God after all, isn't it? That's among the characteristics of God. It's of his very essence that he is eternal. He's always been there. He always will be there. He lives and lives forever. And so, when we discover that Jesus is also God in the flesh, well, it makes complete sense to us that he would come back from the dead. He is, after all, God in his essence. He must come back to life, right? But our gospel for this day is all the more remarkable. Because the one that is raised from the dead is not God in the flesh, but the flesh of a young man who had died that very morning. In the customs of biblical times, burial took place on the very same day as the death. Outside of the city, in the graveyard where the bodies of the Christian faithful were buried, to await the sure and certain resurrection of all bodies on the last day with the coming of the Christ. And then begins the formal grieving period, 30 full days to mourn that death, to grieve their loss, but also to continue to contemplate the mystery of the resurrection to eternal life. That's the faith of the Christian in the Old Testament era as well. It was taught in the Holy Scriptures in passages like the one that we hear this day. That God lives forever, as he declares of himself in Deuteronomy chapter 32. But also note what God also says. I kill and I make a lie. Speaking of human life, he is the Lord of life. He created us and gave us life that he intended to be lived forever. That's how Adam and Eve were created, in bodies like ours, to live forever in God's paradise with God, in the heavens and the earth joined together in perfection, in holiness, without sin, and to live forever. 
in his mercy, after the fall into sin, after earth fell away from heaven, separated from it, and sinners separated from God together with it. Death comes to mankind. And the sorrowing and the grieving and everything else that comes in between our entrance into this world through birth and then waiting and wondering what the span of life will be for each and every one of us. It certainly won't be forever in this world. And thanks be to God for that. It's why he ejected Adam and Eve out of the now polluted garden. So that they would not eat of the fruit of eternal life and live in their sin forever. God has something much grander in place for us. And so he promised a Savior, even his own Son, begotten only of the Father, sent into the world in our flesh, that he might bear our sin in his body and die for it. Let his father kill him, as it were, for the sin of the world. That sin might be done away with in the death of Jesus on the cross. There's a clear testimony in the Old Testament on how the death of God's Christ on the cross leads to resurrection. And it also involves the death of a young man, the son of a widow, in the city of Zarephath, when the prophet Elijah visited them in their home. The boy took sick and died. And then, as the mother pleaded to God through Elijah, the prophet, for mercy upon her, Elijah stretches out this young man's body on the bed, his legs together, his arms stretched out, and Elijah lays on top of him, eye to eye, hand to hand, foot to foot, and prays to God, and by the power of God, this lifeless body is brought back to life anew. It might well be that Old Testament episode that the people here in Nain are recalling when they say, a great prophet has risen among us, as they see the very same miracle accomplished in their very sight. God had indeed visited his people, but not just through a prophet who had been given the power by God to do miracles as God granted to his prophets of old to verify that they spoke truly the word of God. But there in the village of Nain, God is indeed visiting his people. And through this miracle, shows how our lifeless bodies shall be raised by the power of God. On the last day, our bodies will be raised. The bodies of the faithful will be glorified. And they will be the vessels in which our souls will live forever with the ever-living God. 
But this gospel is the great hope for us. We believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, to be sure. But his resurrection makes possible the resurrection of the boy in Zarephath and the young man in Nain and all of us. There is something toward which to look in hope, with joy. That which sustains us through all of the trouble of this life. To recognize that it is nothing other than the manifestation of sin that still is in this world. Still reigns within our bodies. But the power of Jesus not only pledges to us a future resurrection of the whole but now promises to us a resurrection of the soul. For the inner man, as St. Paul speaks of it in the epistle to the Ephesians, rises when we hear this word of Jesus proclaimed in our midst on this night. It raises up our hopes for eternal life. It assures us that indeed we who believe in the forgiveness of sins have together with it have been pledged to us. Even as God has sworn by his own name to live forever, he has likewise pledged that you too will live forever. You are worthy because you believe in his son and the sacrifice that he makes for our sins, taking them away, leaving them in his grave, emerging again from the tomb, filled with new life, even as we are now in that inner man. The graces of holy baptism are stirred up anew within us and brings forth the new man in Christ to live before God in purity and righteousness forever. Our soul leads us to the table at which the very body and blood of Jesus, crucified, resurrected, ascended, and now coming to us again on this night to fill us with the fullness of God, with the fullness of who he is. And that's everything that we need, not only to be assured that we too will rise from the dead at his word, but also transforms our life so that we live from this moment forward completely differently than how we came in here. Even as life could never be the same for this young man or his mother, or those who witnessed this great miracle in that little village. For truly, God had visited his people. So he has on this night, and continues to dwell within us through his word and by his Holy Spirit. So I say to you, in the name of Jesus, your Savior, arise and live, for you live forever. Amen. Peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We join in the offertory. Mm -hmm.
mighty God, Lord Jesus Christ. In the miracle that you performed of the resurrection of the young man at name, you demonstrate your power to likewise raise lost lives. Not only on the last day, but even on this night, as our hope for eternal life through you is restored. Our faith in all that you provide for our living is strengthened. And we are filled with the fullness of God, with everything that you are and possess as you yourself enter into us in this most blessed sacrament of your body and blood on this night. Continue by this renewal and resurrection that you bring to us, that we might live on a higher plane, renewed by what you have accomplished in us, with a more fervent love for you, for our neighbor, and ourselves and running the way of your commandments bless those with whom we share this life and this time we pray that you would bless the missionary endeavors of your church in all places so that many more might likewise be raised up by the power of your word and your spirit to do an even heavenly heart we pray that you would graciously visit our families, even as we pray for daily bread for the world. We pray especially for those nearest and dearest to us, as well as for ourselves, trusting that you indeed will provide that which is best at just the right time. We pray that we might ever receive our bread with thanksgiving to you. Continue your mighty work in all nations under heaven to bring an end to war in the Ukraine, particularly. To put an end to violence wherever the ugly face of that arises. And take out all hatred from all hearts so that instead love, joy, and peace might reign in all places. Bless the refugees from Ukraine and from all places where they flee the hands of evildoers so that they might find refuge and safety and new home in peace. Continue to grant your consolation, your comfort, your peace, in the midst of grieving and mourning and sorrowing over the passing of loved ones to all who are so grieving. Let the picture of your own resurrection from the dead and the resurrection of all those who are joined to faith in you, like these two young men that we see in the Holy Scriptures, be in comfort to those whose loved ones have fallen asleep in the faith, that indeed they will rise together to be with you and with all of your faithful forevermore. Continue your mighty work of healing and strengthening and comforting us in the midst of life's afflictions, in our illnesses and all of our troubles. And pray particularly for the members of this little congregation in the Northwoods. For Jim, that he might be feeling better speedily. For Darlene. For Ted. For Brenda. For Carol. For Karen. For Kyle. Marianne. For me. And that he would continue to provide particularly for. Dominic and Gloria, and lift them up out of the valley of depression and have them live lives filled with joy and peace in you. 
Be merciful towards Lorraine and Will and Mary and Tom, and continue to grant unto them the strength to meet the challenges of each and every new day, relief from pain, and above all, a trust in you as the healer of all. We pray that you would intervene mightily in the midst of situations where persons are in harm or danger. And especially we pray for Chrissy. We ask that she would be kept safe and soon be returned home safely as well. Continue to work with all those who are searching for her, that she may be quickly and safely found. Continue to provide us with all things needful in our lives, especially safe travel wherever life's journeys take us, near or far. Even as we continue to make our homeward journey to you and to our heavenly home with you forevermore. For all things we pray in your holy name, O Jesus Christ, our Savior, you who live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Preface to Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. After the 
the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. to death for all of your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and drink the true blood of Jesus Christ, shed for you. body and his blood strengthen and keep you in the one true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen.
thanks to the Almighty God that thou hast refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we beseech thee that of thy mercy thou wouldst strengthen us through the same in faith toward thee and in fervent love toward one another through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Give thee peace. Amen. Amen.